G'day everyone. Kenberry made a video in which he stated that uh, one of the things that's good for your immune system is bone broth and someone in the comments stated that uh, whenever she, she didn't like the bone broth that she herself made but she did like it when other people made it. So I thought you know, maybe there's a few people out there need to find out how to make bone broth and it's one of those things that's really great to make because it's really easy. Even I can do it and trust me, I'm not the world's greatest cook. So the basic recipe is some water and some bones. Okay, now I've actually done a little bit of preparation and measurement here. So as you can see, I've got a big pot and I've got nine pints of water in there. I, I measured them out using an old pint milk bottle and I also measured out the bones I'm going to put into, into it. That's roughly just under a couple of pounds. So we'll just grab the bones and pop them in. And you can hear my cat yelling in the background. Okay, so as you can see, I've put the bones in. I've gone for a reasonably generous quantity. And that's an important thing with making bone broth, is that you use a generous quantity of bones. Now, what's less important is the sort of bones that you use. I'm using beef bones here, so that you can use uh, whole chicken bones, turkey bones, um, mutton bones, lamb bones, ham bones, pork bones, um, rabbit, venison, camel, goat, whatever you've got available in your local area that you can afford uh, is basically pretty good. And essentially, as you see, you get the bones, you drop them in the pot, and excuse me, while I just turn this on. Okay, there we go. I put this pretty much on high and I bring it to the boil. And then when I put it to the boil, uh, I'm covered over, why not? Um, when I've got it to the boil, I will then move it over to the back burner and put it on very low and let it simmer for oh, even two or three hours. If necessary, I'll top up the water. Um, and then when I get to the end of the process, I'll be adding a little salt just to, you know, to get, get the right flavour. Um, so, so the great thing about this recipe is it is really flexible. Um, you can mix different types of bones together. If you're using chicken, yeah, you can use like chicken necks or chicken frames, um, or you can use say chicken pieces or chicken wings. Um, if I'm using chicken pieces or chicken wings, I actually do get a bit fancy and I get something like some butter and milk that just on low to medium heat. Put the, the chicken pieces or the chicken wings in, just brown them lightly. I'm not aiming at cooking them through. I'm not even too, too worried if I brown every single little bit of the outside or not. And then when I've done that, then I add in my water and proceed as at present. If your more sort of omnivore rather than on the, the carnivore side of things uh, with a beef bone or a ham bone or a bacon bone you can throw in a handful or two of split peas or soup mix or something like that um, i'm doing sort of pretty basic you know beef uh, bone broth for a carnivore here um, and uh, Yes, I say that probably the most difficult part of the job is when you've finished making it, decanting it into all the little containers. So I'll add in one or two shots to show you what it looks like when it reaches the boil and what it looks like, you know, when it's pretty much done. Okay, as you may be able to see, this has come to the boil. So what I'm going to do is should just have a quick look under the lid, see what it looks like. Okay, there you go. Boiling away busily. 
Now, at this stage, a lot of old recipes would say, I'll oh, skim off any scum that comes to the top. Now, I find that if you just let it go on cooking, um, and we're going to put it on to uh, just barely, barely heating at the moment, um, but that, that'll actually deal with any scum on the top anyway. Um, no manual intervention, intervention necessary. Okay, back at the uh, process. And I finally remembered about uh, the portrait rather than the, la uh, the landscape rather than the portrait orientation. My apologies for the earlier parts of the video. Okay, now we come to the bit where we separate the solids from the liquids. Now, what I'm doing, I've lined up for this one is um, a couple of, sort of slotted spoons and some tongs. Uh, the alternative, and it's one that I do use sometimes, is a colander and uh, just sort of pour everything into a bowl and um, lift out the solids and there you go and then etc. However, for now I'm going with tools. Um, I'll stop here and resume once I've actually done the, the deed. And here we have the finished product. I've separated out the solids and there they are. Um, here's the uh, broth itself. Uh, now I put in roughly this, uh, the amount of salt that would fit in, in this uh, dessert spoon, um, mixed it into, into the broth and sort of stirred it well and checked with flavour. Um, so it's pretty much now good to go. If you want more of a vegetable soup, obviously at this stage you, you can throw in a um, stack of chopped up veggies, cook them up and there you go, or you can have it as is. Um, it, again, if you wanted, you, you could have added some herbs or whatever during the latter stages of the, the uh, slow boil. Um, on this occasion I didn't, but you know, it's always an option. And so basically there you go very flexible recipe you, you, it's quite hard to stuff up and uh, have fun with it to, and make your own i'll put a link to ken berry's uh, video in the notes for this one and i'll also include a link to um, a video on, on this topic by frank defano his uh, bone broth is a lot fancier than mine this is the really basic version um, for beginners.